I'm Jason, and in this episode of Control Issues, we'll be taking a look at a lightweight, compact weed whacker that we've built. One of the things that makes this project fun for me is besides including uh, the lightweight aluminum build system Actobotics, it also includes 3D printing, laser cutting, carbon fiber, Arduino, RGB LEDs, LiPo batteries, and brushless motors. So it's a lot of really cool technology all bundled into one compact project. Now this is a brand new uh, motor from Hitech. It's a Hitech Energy Propel brushless motor, and it has an ESC, an electronic speed controller, built into the motor. And it's actually a lot more compact than you see here uh, because this is enclosed inside of a 3D printed housing to protect it from the elements. Um, but I found this to be a really great uh, brushless motor to work with and I've been very impressed with how easy it is to use um, and how compact and powerful it is. Um, that being said, this overall project is more of a thought experiment and kind of just to see how lightweight of a, of a weed whacker we could build and to see if we could make one out of a brushless motor and, a, and LiPo batteries and so forth. So we have not put in hours and hours of testing um, or you know anything like that. So this is far from a finished professional product. Uh, feel free to build one at home, although you know do what you can to be safe because you are spinning at pretty high speeds. Speaking of speeds, this particular brushless motor is a 390 kV uh, brushless motor, which means it spins 390 uh, RPM for one volt that you give it. And we're running off of two 3S LiPo batteries. So LiPo batteries that are fully peaked out will have around 4.2 volts per cell, which will give us a top speed of a little over 9,800 RPM um, if you have fully peaked out batteries. Um, so this is controlled uh, by a PWM signal being sent to the motor slash ESC combo. Um, so one of the, like I said before, one of the nice things about this is that all you need to do is send the PWM signal and supply power, really easy to control. Um, but I wanted to have a trigger system. So we laser cut a trigger, mounted it onto one of our Actobonics potentiometer boards and spring loaded it. The Arduino Pro Micro will take that analog input and map it to a PWM output. And so even though I'm only moving a small amount um, of the overall travel of this pot, it does a really good job of taking that uh, small amount of signal change, mapping it to the full sweep of the PWM change possible, and then sending that along to the brushless motor. Um, it's also using that um, signal to control some RGB LEDs, some NeoPixels um, along the top here, and that will uh, change the color and turn on each one in sequence to give you feedback as to what's going on inside. Um, mostly it's to look cool, but it does give you some, some live feedback as well. We 3D printed some battery boxes and bolted it to the side um, of the, the Actobotics component at the top here. And um, we designed these specifically to fit the LiPo batteries we had on hand. We created grooves at the top for the wires to come through and we laser cut some face plates on the side and kind of painted in um, an engraved area in there with some white paint to, to just give it some an extra final uh, finished product look to it. Um, the, since these are LiPo batteries, you don't want to drain them too low. Um, if you do, you'll actually kill them. So you want to be able to know when it's time to stop weed whacking and charge your batteries. Um, so we do sell some battery buzzers. Uh, usually these are used like in the RC industry. So your RC car or plane will start buzzing when it's time to bring it in. Um, but you can take and plug these into the ports right in the front here and they'll kind of dangle down like earrings or something. And when your batteries are getting too low, it'll buzz at you. So if you subscribe to Robot Magazine, you may notice that we have an article in there uh, covering this project. And we've actually made a few minor modifications to this project since that article launched. Um, primarily what we did is we, we reinforced how we mounted the guard to the carbon fiber tube to give it some extra strength and rigidity. So we also changed exactly how we're mounting the whip uh, to the shaft of the motor. Um, this motor comes with this nose cone and in the article you might see an image where we've just mounted that weed whip right into the nose cone which was uh, beautifully minimalistic um, and it worked most of the time but if you encountered a fair amount of resistance if you're cutting through some th thick stuff 
um, it would since the, the the bend point on that whip is so close to the center they're so close to each other if it starts to bend back too much they they very easily in, interact with each other and start all of a sudden twisting around each other and it would fix itself pretty quickly and just whip right back out because of the uh, momentum but uh, the centrifugal force but it, it was an issue so we decided to make a modified version where we use our round base plate to extend the overall diameter where the mounting of the actual whip happens, where the, the flex point is. Um, and this helped tremendously. And so we were able to cut through some really thick stuff without much issue, other than running into the life uh, span of the actual whip itself. So this, uh, basically the, the, the weak point in this setup so far has been the, the whip itself. Um, so if you want to get the strongest, most professional grade whip you can, it's actually really easy to swap this out and put a new piece in. Um, you just loosen these two pinch bolts, slide it out, slide a new one in and tighten it. Um, you do want to trim this so that it's um, equal on both sides so that it's uh, nice and balanced. But so far, uh, we were able to uh, do quite a bit of whipping through some pretty thick stuff and, and so far it's worked out pretty well. But like I mentioned earlier, we don't really know the full lifespan of a brushless motor used in this way because this is directly mounted to the, to the shaft of the brushless motor. For the two handles, we actually use the same um, foam piece that we use on our pan and tilt control handles. Um, and this right here is actually one of my favorite parts of the project. It took about a minute and a half and three parts to put together and it gives you a really nice uh, side handle. The final thing I want to mention about this project um, is one of my favorite points about it and that is that it's only 3.3 pounds, about 1.5 kilograms in total, batteries and everything, um, which is fantastic. That's kind of one of the things we're actually going for is to see how lightweight of a weed whacker we can make that could still actually get the job done. Um, so this um, little guy is going to be easy to use um, and uh, lightweight and be able to be pretty compact, just throw it into a, a closet or something. So a project like this would actually be really great for an urban dweller who just, you know, needs to trim a small lawn now and again um, and doesn't need a great big gas powered or, or you know, giant um, electric weed whacker. As always, this project is open source. If you're interested in building one, we've provided the 3D files we've used, the files you need for laser cutting, um, the parts list, the code, and everything you need in an instructable that we'll link to in the show notes.